All right, everyone. And for our last talk for today in the suite, remember we have another talk after this at the main room only. But this is the last talk here um, at this room. Uh, we have a talk on descheduler, and we have Lucas Severo Alves and Jan Chalupka uh, talking about it. And yeah, we have this is a half an hour session, and we'll be done after that. But feel free to. Um, get a drink, get a coffee, get some refreshments after that, and join everyone in the main room. Just want to remind everyone that there will be one last session in the main room after this. This is the last session for this particular room. All right, then. Take it away. Thank you. So well, we'll come to our talk about the disk scheduler. Disk scheduler is this project that we help maintain. It's basically a project that helps you place your pods at the right place all the time. So a brief introduction. I'm Lucas. This is Jan. We work at Red Hat as engineers, and uh, we are involved in this project, the scheduler, since the beginning, and I'm now helping uh, develop this new framework of, for the scheduling. So the basic idea here is that like, scheduling in Kubernetes evolved like a lot. You have like, topology spread constraints to help you spread pods. You have like, scheduling being aware of like, uh, uh, affinity, taint, and all that. But the thing is, after a pod is placed, that's it. Unless you're considering like preemption and all that, we are not talking about that. But if a pod is placed, that's it. So thinking about that, we can go over an example just to, to, to like feel uh, what we're talking about. So if you have a deployment, and inside the deployment, you can uh, configure a topology spread constraint. And if you're not familiar with this, uh, I'll explain a, a, a demo or an example on, of how this works. But basically, you want to spread your pods uh, with regard to a domain, a topology key. In this case, zones. So thinking about availability zones. And here we have max Q1. So the maximum difference between like, the number of pods in a zone and another one needs to be at maximum one. So let's say we have like three zones, like three availability zones, and the number of nodes in these zones doesn't matter that much, so we're basically thinking only about the zones. And we get a pod, and Cube Scheduler will like make a decision, okay, which node, or in, the, in this case, which zone to place this pod. Let's put this pod at zone A, then the next pod will go to zone B, like uh, obeying the max Q1, and the next pod at zone C. And if we go over this for a few uh, times, the, the fourth pod will, can go to any of these zones because max Q1 will still be valid. And eventually, we'll have like this scenario, six pods, two in each zone. And this is perfectly balanced. And this is what you want. So topology spread constraint uh, helps, helps you to get that. So let's say what happens if you get a new zone with new nodes, but no new pods. So this is an unbalanced environment. You have a new zone that has no pods, and all the other zones are full, let's say. Cube Scheduler will not rebalance this. This is placed. Cube Scheduler just get, gets pod and will place a pod in a zone or in a node. The scheduler comes fr from for the rescue. So Cube Scheduler will We'll install it in your node, and it will keep looking for pods that are offending one of the rules that you set. So in this case, this scheduler will literally f r uh, fire a laser beam at your pod. Uh, I'm very proud of that smoke. And <laughs> it will play, uh, it will, the pod will go back to painting, and the uh, cube scheduler will place the pod in a new zone. So the idea here is this scheduler is not aware of cube scheduler. Cube scheduler is not aware or this schedule, but we are like taking advantage of how things work. So you're just evicting pods that are offending one of the rules that you set. Cube schedule will pick that up and place in a place that makes sense for you. And then thinking about some other ways that this scheduler can help you. So it's still in availability or like spreading pods around your cluster. Maybe you're not thinking about zones. You're not thinking about like topologies and all that. You're just worried about, okay, Replicas from the same deployment should be spread around. So this scheduler can help with that, and it will evict pods that are maybe replicas in the same node, and then Cube Scheduler will place them in new nodes, so you have more spread out uh, topology. Removing pods that are uh, in your cluster, and then you notice that you have underutilized nodes. 
So the scheduler will notice that, will evict pods from heavy utilized nodes, and those are move uh, because Cube Scheduler will place them in nodes that are underutilized. Some other example that is basically the same, the one from the beginning, but maybe you have static zones, you're not, not having new zones, but you're thinking about, okay, we have AZ degradation, we have evacuation, but then the AZ is healthy again, and we need something to just gradually uh, balance the workloads. And you don't have to think a, a lot about that. This scheduler will do, just do that for you. And then when you think about costs, you want uh, to be cost efficient. You want to use as little as you, you can uh, of like expensive instance types in your uh, topology. So you have some nodes that are very underutilized, like so just a few pods there, and those are expensive instances, and you want to just like move them around uh, to nodes that could be more cost effective and you kill those pods, they will move, and then you can use something else to, like, to remove the nodes. And exactly like that, like as a companion to these scenarios, if you're bin packing uh, pods, you want help deleting nodes, so probably you're thinking about cluster autoscaler or maybe carpenter to help with that, or if you're like, you need to scale up and like, have pods spread out on a lot of nodes, you want help like, to add nodes to your uh, topology. And yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So, so far, you've seen some use cases that can be solved by the descheduler. So, now let's go through some existing strategies we have and how to configure those and, and so on. Right. So, like, there are some strategies. So, for example, we have a, a, a remove duplicates, which makes sure that if there are uh, nodes which have, which have uh, more du uh, uh, duplicates of a pod than others, the strategy will try to rebalance uh, uh, the pods. The low node utilization and make sure that uh, the pods are, uh, are evenly uh, balanced across nodes with respect to uh, the resource uh, util uh, utilization. High node utilization was mentioned uh, before. Uh, 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 with the uh, been uh, uh, been uh, like uh, 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 yes, sorry, and uh, uh, remove uh, pods uh, avoiding topology spec constraints was a mention as well, but it tries to uh, minimize the uh, maximum skew uh, between uh, pods across the topology domains and uh, the pod lifetime, which makes sure that uh, if a pod has been running for, for too long, it is evicted as well. Right. So it, it, uh, here, uh, so in the past, uh, we had a, a V1 alpha 1 version of the, of, uh, the policy, which allowed you to only specify uh, like a list of strategies that are run, but in version V1 alpha 2, we decided to, to introduce profiles. So like, in short, this, uh, this is a file. And so on the uh, 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 global scope, we allow to configure things like uh, a maximum number of pods that get uh, scheduled uh, per uh, uh, namespace and others. And uh, in each profile, uh, you can actually sp specify like a, a list of uh, like uh, strategies. Like, like including uh, like, uh, uh, like a configuration of, of strategies and uh, then a list of stages in which uh, the plugins or the, st or the strategies are, are like, uh, like, uh, like uh, executed. Right. Like additionally, uh, you can also like uh, configure the name, name space of filtering, which allows you to either include or exclude uh, n uh, namespaces, or node fit, which allows you to actually tell the, uh, tell the D scheduler to, uh, before it tries to evict a pod, if uh, like, uh, uh, the node has uh, sufficient resources for scheduling a new pod, for example. Now, like, all the strategies like uh, that were mentioned here, 
uh, were turned into plugins, which allows you to actually uh, wrap the, the scheduling policy into a, like a, a, a separate a code, which allows actually for a creation of, like of a, a framework. So here you can separate uh, the policy from the rest of the code, and additionally, you can also build your own uh, like your own uh, plugins, which allows you to specify actually your own way how you want to evict the uh, pods. So, uh, for example, you can evict pods, pods based on incoming uh, traffic. Or you can define your own way of how the pods are sorted or filtered, uh, for example, based on uh, metrics. Or you can, if you have some internal policies uh, uh, which cannot be like exposed publicly, uh, then again, that's a, another use case for you, right? Like here, in short, like if you are like a fa like a familiar uh, with this, uh, like the scheduling uh, framework, uh, 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 then you can see that like the structure is like almost uh, the same. So, like in short, you you specify uh, the uh, the plugin type, then uh, the Framework. Once your plugin is like uh, part of the framework, then injects the handle and arguments, uh, 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 which you can then uh, parse in a way uh, that you like. And then you basically uh, define like the first level, ex first level extension points like the schedule and balance, uh, which are invoked d directly by uh, the framework. And you can also uh, define like a second level extension points which are invoked from a, a within uh, the, uh, the plugin. So now like here's a list of extension points which are currently implemented in uh, the framework. So for example the D schedule allows you to uh, build like a policy which uh, is uh, descheduling a pod independently of other pods. Whereas the uh, 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 balance extension points allows you to actually take take other pods into account. Uh, yeah, uh, those are the uh, the first level, and uh, the other are filter, which allows you to filter uh, the pods at the uh, uh, beginning when your plugin starts to process pods. The uh, pre-evicted filter is uh, is executed right before a pod is evicted. And there are upcoming sort and pre eviction sort, uh, which are sorting uh, before pods are processed and then right away right before they are evicted. So, like, a, 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 so, and then, uh, then we can like uh, uh, combine plugins into profiles. As I uh, mentioned uh, before, uh, uh, there was a, a V1 Alpha 1 one a version which allow you to only use one uh, plugin only once but with the profiles you can use the same plugin uh, multiple times just with a uh, different configuration and at uh, the same time you can use also use the same plugin with different ex extension points which actually allows you to even more customize uh, the behavior uh, that you want and like again the uh, as Lucas mentioned, uh, we are uh, building a, di a descheduling f a framework. It's uh, still a work, in, a work in progress. So if you take a look at the, uh, the upstream issue 753, there's like an, uh, like an uh, ongoing uh, discussion with links to the uh, design proposal. So if you are like interested in joining uh, uh, the effort, just feel free to take a look. A look there. Uh, uh, we are also like like planning to uh, to uh, provide ability to like specify out of three uh, plugins, so so you can build your own schedule to your needs. So like if you have some time, just feel free to build it and experiment with uh, the f uh, framework. And if you are happy or even unhappy, just uh, just. Oh, that's no. 
Okay. Yep. So this is just a quick demo with the pod lifetime uh, plugin because it's the simpler one. And one sec. So the idea is here is that on the right we have a few Nginx pods running and on the, the left we are doing the actions. So first we are just installing the project with Helm and we are setting the deployment type to be deployment because you can also run as a cron job in some other ways, other install types. And um, then we are getting the pods on cube system uh, namespace just to see that the scheduler is installed. It's there on the bottom, and it's running. It's basically a pod running this loop recurrently and checking for pods that are like offending one of the rules that you set. And we can see the logs of that uh, the scheduler just to see that it's running. For now, it's not evicting any pods. Like the eviction is zero for now, the eviction count. And pods are running on the right, and that's fine. Um, then we can actually have a look on the configuration. Uh, it's a config map. As Jan said, it's a config file that you pass for it. And the pod lifetime is set for 80,000 uh, seconds. So it only, for this strategy alone, it will only uh, evict pods older than that. But now I move to 15 seconds. I will restart the scheduler, just so it's running with the new configuration. And then pods start to be evicted and then rescheduled by the cube scheduler. So very, very, so the age there, when it's over 15 seconds, and of course when the, the scheduler is a new refresh interval, it will take a bit longer, maybe 17 or 19. It run and it will be evicted and then they will be uh, rescheduled. Yeah, it's very simple. <laughs> but then when you have more complex rules, it will like be a bit more interesting, like topology spread constraint and of that. <laughs> and yeah, so the idea here, just to show a bit of the code for pod lifetime. This is the simpler, uh, simplest uh, plugin. And basically, as Jan said, you define the name for it. You check that you're implementing our interface like correctly. Then you implement the methods for that we expect with the right signature. So the one that you need to implement is new to build the plugin. Here are setting some filters, like a, uh, let's say default filters. But the interesting one is this one, the custom filter, that we already save. This plugin should filter pods that are uh, newer. It only includes the, the, the older ones, so this is already the set of pods that you want to evict. And then you're implementing the this schedule uh, extension point. So this is a, a plugin that is evicting a pod only based on the pod uh, status, not considering other pods. And then you're just like uh, uh, organizing pods and sorting them to evict from the older ones to the less old ones. And th that's basically it. It's a very simple plugin, and implementing a plugin is as simple as that. Then back to the presentation. Doesn't go to the next slide. Okay, so roadmap for the project. That could be interesting. Uh, yeah, we are adding open telemetry tra tracing. Uh, as Jan mentioned, we are like going to this new descheduling framework to give more custo uh, customization and like uh, ways for users to have like closed or open source plugins or the, of their own. And because of that, we had to have new ways to configure the project. So we have V1 Alpha 2 in place. And at some point, we will deprecate and remove v1 of a one. For now, it's supported. We have more no node feed options. So node feed, it's a it's an option that gives a lot of discussion in the community because, like, considering other nodes and considering if they are schedulable or not, is a discussion that is we have like 
a few issues and open and it's very controversial and we want to, to add more options so people uh, have more uh, flexibility and of course we want to start the custom plugin registry initiative so we want to have we don't want to have a new repository with new code to maintain with a lot of plugins as kube scheduler have now ha has nowadays we want to like have a reference and people can implement their own repositories their own plugins and we have a reference to, the, to those and a registry and we can like say which are in beta which are stable and this kind of stuff and of course uh you, we need uh, new maintainers and we need new people to just talk to us about how they are using this, this scheduler. So we are basically at the SIG scheduling channel on Kubernetes Slack. We are a SIG sponsored uh, project, so we uh, are under the same SIG chairs. Uh, the community meeting that we have uh, is once a month, so the next one is on May 9th. But we also share a bit of the community meeting with the SIG scheduling folks. Uh, and please reach out to us, and we would like to understand a bit more how the schedule is being run on like big clusters and some other topologies and other uh, scenarios. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Hi, cool talk. Uh, is there a way to tell it to only uh, consider pods on a particular subset of the nodes? I know you could probably write a plug-in to do that, but I didn't know if it was something you guys were already doing. Do you want to answer this one? Yeah, uh, I can actually maybe go back. So there's a node uh, selector field, uh, the a global a global uh, way of like the uh, configuration, and it was. Um, Go. One more, yeah. One more, yeah. Node selector. This work, yeah. Like here, the node uh, ah. selector. So, yeah. You, you can also like uh, have label uh, labels, yeah. labels, uh, label selectors. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, very cool project. Um, just a quick question around like thundering herd kind of situations. If you have one availability zone that's sort of degraded, can you end up in a situation where uh, you've got this kind of ping pong ping pong happening between descheduler and scheduler, kind of moving stuff back and back and forth all the time? Um, can you sort of throttle that with global config or something to try and slow that down? Or yeah, you can uh, probably exclude that zone from the descheduler being looked. Uh, so it ignores it for a while until you, it, it comes back. It can also pause the scheduler for a while. We also saw some people do, doing okay. that. Yeah. Cool. So that's basically it. Yeah. Um, we do have a few minutes, so we can take more questions. Hi. Hey. So um, here uh, in in the pod spec, um, we have a field. Um, for the affinity required during scheduling, ignored during execution, uh, and another similar one. Um, how, um, or will, <laughs> is there also on the horizon that um, there will be um, a similar one for uh, the descheduling process? We actually have, like, uh, remove pods violating affinity rules. And we j just showed the most famous ones, like the most popular ones, but it's one of the strategies that we support. So we will evict pods that are like vi violating affinity. So it's it's also uh, available uh, in the in the pod spec directly. No, oh, okay. you configure uh, for so the schedule will evict those, evict uh, pods that are violating affinity. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've had times when uh, one of the uh, worker nodes uh, was quite full, let's say for memory, and then you just have to cordon that node and then kill some process to make sure it goes to another uh, worker node. Yes. Sir. That is one of the cases you uh, are, are can be established with it. Yes, yes. So it's one of the examples. Uh, it's the the contrary, like the the other side of bin packing, it's actually <coughs> evilly spread, evil spread uh, pods. 
So we notice that other nodes are underutilized, and we evict pods from overutilized nodes, so they go to the underutilized ones. Yeah, that's basically it. It's the low node utilization, yes, low uh, utilization. strategy. Yeah. On that topic, what are the possible ways to configure the node under utilization? CPU memory? You, yeah, CPU memory or any CPU memory uh, and... There are also extended resources, any extended... Uh, like resource. GPU. But uh, you set a high threshold and a low threshold, so you consider what... So you know what is an underutilized or overutilized node. Any other questions? We have about five minutes uh, left for your talk. If you'd like to discuss something or yeah. play around more with the demo you just did or talk a little bit about the plugin that you were talking about and um, brainstorm some ideas, absolutely go for it. Yeah, so right now we are looking for, like we have some information about users and customers that use the project, but it's still very little. It's uh, double. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we have, we consider that we still have very little information about how the discheduler is being used. We know that it's heavily used, but we don't know like a lot of information. So we wanted to know a bit more of users and how they use it. We have a few metrics here from one of the maintainers that is also a user. Like he used in a very big cluster with like more than 4, 000, uh, 40 thousand pods. What is it? A pod count. So forty. 40,000 pods, and we have some information about like uh, resource consumption and like which strategies evict pods more when they have errors and all, but we want more of this generally, and we want like help running like tests in real environments in big clusters. So this is a project that is also shipped by, not by default, but it's one of the supported uh, operators for OpenShift. So you can go on Operator Hub inside OpenShift and it's an official uh, operator, you install the scheduler there. And then there are a few, we don't support all the strategies there. And then because of this, we have some information, but uh, yeah, we wanted to get more use and more like discussions and understand how the project is doing on the wild. Yeah, basically. Also, go ahead. So uh, we also have uh, a resource consumption of running the disk scheduler actually over this huge cluster. And I can, I can see like the CPU consumption is, let's say, low, it's fine. But if, if we take, take a look at the memory consumption, it's like uh, quite high, like over 1.5 gigabyte of memory, up to 2.5 sometimes. But we also get a resource consumption of the cube, of the scheduler, yeah. Yeah. and it's quite, like it's also above 1.5, so like uh, we are not uh, doing so badly, but like uh, there's always always some space for improvement. So again, once the descheduling framework is is done, then like uh, we plan to actually improve the memory consumption and uh, trying to go down. So it is it's like. Uh, it's because, especially the, the strategies that are balanced strategies, because we want to, uh, when we are like going over the algorithm, we need to consider the whole context of the node. We need to know, like, to know if uh, the cluster is balanced, you need to know the place of every pod on every namespace and every zone and all that. And then the pod informers and also the way that we look, uh, work with the arrays and maps. So some things can be optimized, yeah, for co of course. I don't think it's that noticeable, but we want more information on that <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Can you rate limit the deep scheduler? Like, I only want you to deep schedule this amount per... Yes. Okay. You can. Okay. Like, uh, um, pod, maximum pods. Yeah, so it it limits the number of pods that will get uh, evicted, okay. but I don't... It will not decrease the, uh, the resource uh, consumption. And not the resource so consumption. It, yeah. it will be the but same. Going yes, yes, that's yes, true. yes, that's true. Yeah, but there's some configurations where you could make the cube scheduler uh, work against 
the disk scheduler, like if you don't properly configure them, because then you're just killing uh, a lot of pods every time, and then keep scheduling is trying to uh, place them any, in any way, and then the scheduler is killing again. So you have to be aware of what configuration you're giving the disk scheduler, and what configuration you give to your deployments, and how keep scheduler will place pods on, on nodes and zones and, and all that. Yeah. Yeah.